Hello, I'm Hannah, and this is Hannah's Books. I'm here today to celebrate the birthday of one of the great stars of Booktube, Doris at Alta Books. The prompts all begin with a letter, and the letters spell out her first name. Let's get started. The first prompt is D is for Doris, a book written by or about a Doris. In my efforts to put something out quickly, I haven't watched other people's Doris videos yet, but I'm sure we'll all have some overlaps here in our booktube greetings to you. And I can't imagine you don't already have this book, Doris, the Book of Saurus, by Diana Murray and illustrated by Yu Yi Chen. The description starts, hooray for books, they make me roar. The rhyming text tells the adventure of a group of young dinosaurs after being inspired by one of their childhood books. The second prompt, O is for outside your comfort zone. I'll name some young adult fiction by John Green. Although as a middle-aged old lady, I honestly don't have a lot of interest in YA fiction, the work of John Green is a bit of an exception for several reasons, one of which I'll mention today. When I was relatively fresh out of college, I was a TA and then a teacher at a summer residential program for what a friend of mine calls the heinously gifted. One summer, I taught Southern literature during the first term and then was a teaching assistant during the second term for a class on imperialism and colonialism. At the end of the summer, my students presented me with a copy of The Lorax by Dr. Seuss, signed by all of them. Many years later, several years after I married a young man I met at camp that summer, our young YA-aged son was reading through one of my bookshelves, found Dr. Seuss, and puzzled out all the handwritten inscriptions by my old students. He pointed to one. Is this that John Green? I immediately flash back to that kid in my class and his face and his style, and I was pretty sure it was indeed that John Green, even though I had never thought about it before. My homeschooled son and I had just watched his crash course history classes, and I had said over and over that he approached history in ways more similar to the way I approached history than anyone I'd ever seen. I wish I could take credit for that, but I suspect we might have both learned it from the main teacher of the class. Anyway, I contacted him through Twitter and asked if he had been in that class, and he confirmed that it was him. I really intended to insert a photo of that inscription of his here, but I can't figure out where the book is now. I suspect one of us put it in some special safe place. Choosing a special place is never a good idea. Next, R is for recommended, a book, topic, or theme Doris featured on her channel that intrigued you. I'm eager to read The Song of Trees, Stories from Nature's Great Connectors by David George Haskell. Doris's description of this work of nature writing with a strong literary style sounds fantastic and very peaceful. And right now, in this time of corona apocalypse, peaceful reading sounds especially perfect. The fourth prompt is I is for indeed. She's crazy about cats and bees. I'll go with Doris Lessing and her book on cats. What could be more perfect than a memoir about Doris and her feline loves? Lessing first fell in love with cats when she was growing up on a farm in Africa. In the book, she talks about how the cats in her life have shaped her and how they lived together and grew together and how they communicate with each other. The final prompt is S is for Skyrocket, a book you think Doris might like and that you want her to read increasing her Tower of Doom. As a fellow Southerner, I'll recommend some Southern history for Doris. Yesterday I mentioned Jacqueline Hall's wonderful historical study written with a group of other historians, like a family, the making of a Southern cotton mill world. And it's a really beautiful read if you haven't seen it yet. 
perhaps easier to get your hands on, is Jacqueline Hall's newest book, Sisters and Rebels, A Struggle for the Soul of America, the biography of three Lumpkin sisters who were descendants of slaveholders and grew up in a culture of white supremacy. The three came to terms with how to go forward and how to shape how the region and nation would go forward in quite different ways. Sisters and Rebels was just awarded the Penn Bogard Weld Award for Biography. I think you might love her work, Doris, if you haven't seen it yet. So that's it. Happy birthday, Doris. You've been a phenomenal force for good on BookTube, and I am so glad to get to celebrate with you. Thanks for inviting me to the party, Sean, and thanks to all of you for joining me here on Hannah's Books. See you soon. Thank you.